Welcome to Algebra Quiz 5. This problem was taken from High School Mathematics published by Mo Publishers in Moscow in 1986. This problem is published in my blog vijayrahavendran.wordpress.com and the video of the same will be posted on YouTube with a link to the blog as well. This is a fantastic problem as it involves all the mathematical operations that we would have come across in mathematics. We've got addition, we've got subtraction, we've got multiplication within the terms and between terms, we've got division, we've got certs, and we couldn't ask for anything more. So let's see how we are going to tackle this problem. Okay, I'm going to take term by term and then we will see how we're going to do it. Okay, let's go to um, our trage and I'll name this as the term 1 and this is the term 2. Okay, so term one. So what I say is that in the denominator, I've got an irrational number there. So the first thing I'm going to do is to rationalize the denominator. Okay, so to do that, I would have to multiply and divide by the conjugate of the rational entity. Okay, what I mean is this. So we've got a square root of two sorry, square root of a plus b square root of b divided by square root of a plus square root of b. Rationalization means I'm taking the conjugate of the denominator, so multiplying and dividing by square root of a minus square root of b. Okay, and we've got the minus square root of a b term. So, simplifying it further, what do we get is this. This entity here, the denominator, this is like a plus b times a minus b. So, it's going to be a square minus b square, which means we've got the denominator a minus b. So, in the numerator, if I multiply it all the way, what I get is a multiplied by square root of a multiplied by square root of a square root of a times square root of a would be a, a times a would be a square. Okay, and then a square root of a minus square root of b would be a square root of a b. Then we've got b square root of b square root of a, so it's going to be plus b square root of a b. And then we've got minus b there, square root of b, square root of b, which is a b times b, it's going to be b square. Okay, and then I've got minus a b under the square root. So if I take the common denominator a minus b, what I get now is this. I've got, I'm going to pull the, the rational ones from the rational ones. So a square minus b square pulled into one side and I've got um, minus a square root of a b plus b square root of a b and then I've got minus square root of a b multiplied by a minus b. Simplifying it further we get, we get a square minus b square We've got a square root of a b here, we've got a, a square root of a b here, which we add it up to get minus 2a square root of a b. And then we've got b square root of a b there, minus, minus times minus plus, it's going to be b square root of a b, so it's going to be plus 2b square root of a b, divided by a minus b. Okay, so let's simplify this further. a square minus b square can be written as a plus b times a minus b. And we've got 2 square root of a b common, so I'm going to take 2 square root of a b outside the brackets, which would be a minus b divided by a minus b. Okay, I'm going to use the space above here. And I've got a minus b on 
both the terms, taking it outside the bracket, a minus b multiplied by a plus b minus 2 square root of a b. Okay, we've got that one divided by a minus b. So the a minus b cancel out and what we've got is a plus b minus 2 square root of a b. So that's the simplification of the first term. Okay, let's see how we're going to go about doing the second term. So the second term is this. We've got term 2, which is a under the square root plus b under the square root square divided by a minus b square. So expanding the brackets and squaring it, we get a plus b plus 2 square root of a b divided by a minus b square. Okay, let's keep it as it is. And I'm going to compare it with the term 1. So what is the term 1, which is uh, what we got was um, we got a plus b minus square root of a b. Term 1 is a plus b minus 2 square root of a b. So the original problem was we're going to multiply term 1 with term 2. That means a plus b minus 2 square root of a b multiplied by a plus b plus 2 square root of a b divided by a minus b whole square. So this is looking a bit simpler. This entity here, if you name that as x, and this is as y, we've got the same terms on both sides except for the sign. So if that's x minus y, x plus y, which is going to be x square minus y square. So we can do a plus b whole square minus 2 square root of b, a, b, sorry, whole square divided by a minus b whole square. So simplifying that further, we get a square plus 2ab plus b square minus 4ab divided by a minus b whole square. The square root vanishes when you square it. Which so simplifies it further as a square minus 2ab plus b square divided by a minus b whole square, which is same as a minus b whole square divided by a minus b whole square, which cancel out and we get 1. Isn't that fantastic? We started off at the very big term and we simplify and say when you multiply those two terms, what we're going to get is 1. So this is the solution for the problem. So simplifying that, this particular, these two terms brings us to one. Okay, so I took this problem one step further and then what I noticed in Excel, because I took the problem onto Excel, and then this is the first term and that's the second term. Okay, and I've named the the A and B. And then what I notice is that as long as A and B are sequential squared numbers, the whole entity, the both the terms, when you multiply, they become one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm making this clear. Let's see if I can go about it again. So we've got this one. This is just the Excel notation of the whole problem. So that's the term 1. That's a square root of a plus b square root of b divided by square root of a plus square root of b. Okay, that's the first part minus square root of a b. So that's the whole first term. And then that one is square root of a plus square root of b whole square divided by a minus b whole square. So I've taken these two terms and I'm writing an, an if statement here which is if 
if term 1 is equal to term 2, give me true, otherwise false. Yeah, and the true and the false are text, and you have to put open quotes. Yeah. So what I notice is that as long as I give A and B as two consecutive square numbers, this both the terms, when you multiply, it adds up to 1. And individually, they add up to 1 as well. So let's say, take this as 9, and this one, let's make it as 16. And let's say, oh, voila, that we get true. If that is going to be 16, and that's going to be 25, it's going to be true. So as long as A and B are two consecutive squared numbers, this relationship is true. So I did that. Why is that so? In an algebraic way. So the algebraic way is this. So let's take the number a as x squared and b as the next consecutive number which is the square of it. Okay and let's see the whole operation what happens so a squared of a plus b squared of b divided by square root of a plus square root of b minus a b so this under simplification what we get is a is x squared times square root of a is going to be x plus b is x plus 1 whole square and square root of b is x plus 1 divided by x plus x plus 1. Okay, that's a square root. And then we've got minus square root of a, b, which is going to be minus x times x plus 1. So if I simplify this, so we've got x cubed plus we've got x plus 1 square times x plus 1. It's going to be x plus 1 whole cubed divided by, we've got 2x plus 1 minus x times x plus 1. So if I expand that further, I get x cubed plus x, expanding this a plus b whole cube as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3a square b plus 3ab square divided by 2x plus 1 and then if we take a common denominator on top of it what we get is this x times x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 so if I multiply the whole thing and simplify what I get is um, in the end I get 2x plus 1 so I'll leave that to you to simplify that 2x plus 1 so which is going to be 1 so that's the first term. So the second term is going to be... So the term 2 was square root of a plus square root of b whole square divided by a minus b whole square. So I'll actually simplify this even further, which is the same as writing a plus b plus 2 square root of a b divided by a minus b whole square. So a plus b is x square plus x plus 1 whole square plus 2ab which is 2 times x times x plus 1 divided by a minus b is x square minus x plus 1 whole square the whole thing is a square so this one is a square plus b square plus 2ab so it's so this is the same as x plus x plus 1 whole square divided by so this one is it's a bit like saying a square minus b square whole square so which is a plus b it's a bit like writing a plus b times a minus b whole square so this one here it becomes one the numerator and the denominator they cancel out we get one so, as I said earlier in my Excel file, as long as the numbers are two consecutive squared number, both the terms, they become one. 
otherwise it's not true. So the same problem could have been asked in a different way. Um, we could have been asked, okay, uh, show that one is equal to as a combination of third, a plus sign, a negative sign, a division sign, and a multiplication sign. Okay, so if that is the case, then we can say f um, a square root of a plus square root of b divided by um, a square root of a plus b square root of b divided by square root of a plus square root of b minus square root of a b. So this one should be equal to 1 as long as the a and b are two consecutive squared numbers.